I want this video to be somewhat of a resource video. I don't know if it will be or not, but I'm gonna go over a lot of sprayers in this video. Anything from a big tank sprayer to a handheld two gallon sprayer to a backpack sprayer to a ride on spreader sprayer to kind of give you an overview. It's not gonna be every sprayer that's ever been invented, but to kind of talk to you about how I use these sprayers, what I like about them, what I don't like about them, and hopefully this is gonna be informative for you. Let's get started right now. Well, if you're a fan of the channel, then you know I've been uh, using this Graham spray rig for a while. This is a 400 gallon split tank, and we're gonna start with that. But as I said, I've got little two gallon uh, sprayers over here. I got this handy little wood compartment, and this video is not gonna be overly edited, I can assure you that, because I want to just be kind of raw footage here. But this is my Z spray, and I've also got these backpack sprayers. There's a ground logic I also have, which is now the Ferris Pathfinder that I'm gonna put in here too. I don't have it with me because I had to get a little bit of service done to it, but I'm gonna talk about it as well. So I'm on my third lawn care business. When I started, I wanted to get in weed control and fertilization, and I needed a spray rig. So I called a friend of mine. He said, you need to go to Graham Spray Equipment. So I called them up, talked with, uh, talk with them, and got this 400 gallon split tank rig which has served me very well so let's go over this for a little bit and then we'll move on to some of the smaller pieces of equipment over here is a 300 gallon size it actually holds about 310 and over here we call it the 100 but it holds about 105 gallons and one of the big advantages of the split tank is for me i'm doing two different things i'll tell you kind of how i use it uh, sometimes i might have my bermuda zoysia mix over here and my centipede saint augustine mix over here because i have primarily bermuda and zoysia yards which a lot of times from a lawn care perspective are treated basically the same. And over here, I'll have Centipede and St. Augustine, which have a lot of similarities in the way we treat those. Uh, I can use these valves here. If I were to flip that valve up and that valve up, then it would start pulling from this small side. With all three of them down, it's pulling from the large side. So I use that uh, to be able to have two different products or two different mixes. Another way I can use it, you know, having the ride on spreader sprayers, out of this this whole setup here with the the let's go gun over here i'm spraying about two gallons per thousand square feet but let's just say i've got a property i want to use a ride on spreader sprayer for then i might mix this small side mixed up already at the ratio it needs to be for my ride on machine so it might be a lot more concentrated i put a little bit of blue dye in there and what that's gonna allow me to do is to be able to, if I'm on a little yard and I just wanna spray it with the hose, fine, do that. Maybe I get on a bigger property or multiple properties and I wanna ride the machine, I can refill the machine out of this side just by flipping those valves. And I'll put just a little bit of blue dye in there so I'll know when I flip the valves, I can spray it back into the original tank until it turns blue. And now I know, okay, I'm on, when it's blue, I'm on the mix that goes in this, the spreader sprayer and I do that and then just do the reverse process to get back to spraying out of the tank. This thing has a bean piston pump. It's got mechanical agitation on this side, which means it's a big metal paddle and they're turning around and just sloshing it up big time. Over here is jet agitation, which is water that kind of circulates through there. And you see it runs off this little Honda engine, but all in all, not that complicated, but this thing has been great and has served me well to, to make a lot of money. What I'll do all the time is I'll mix that small side. I'll put maybe 50 gallons of Celsius and certainty and they're already mixed up at the ratio that I want it to go in these little two gallon uh, handhelds. And I'll just keep refilling those things and walk around spot treating the weeds on the yard so I don't have to blanket spray. Now it's a lot of walking, but it allows me to be thorough on covering the yard without blanket spraying an expensive product. Now this is the 2023 redesigned Z spray. Some of you may know that Z turf equipment bought out the Z spray uh, several years ago and they basically left it unchanged up until the 2023 model which is a, a lot of ways a total redesign. I mean it still looks a lot of ways similar but as we compared it we did a video uh, where we compared it side by side and there's a lot of features that have been upgraded. For instance these booms here flex both ways now which can help you not if you were to hit something. Things that have a lower center of gravity to help you hold on heels, larger tires, 
a more comfortable platform, an easier to access button down there. And one of the things that the mechanics will love is much easier access to all of this. You, the hopper will actually raise all the way up, giving you very easy access to the engine for oil changes and things like that. Now, this thing is fantastic. Now, I've never actually owned one of the older model Z spray, so I don't have anything to compare it with, but I had a friend of mine bring his older model over here, and he was really raving about some of the changes they made. And my goal this fall is to start incorporating this more into my application program. I've got a trailer. I got. I just bought a second truck to be able to pull this around. I've gotten uh, more comfortable driving it. And I was talking to a guy the other day. It was very helpful for me because my concern with a ride-on spreader sprayer sometimes is how can I get right up next to the shrubs without getting on the shrubs? Well, this one's got the foam marking kit, which is great. So it's going to drop foam out. And I need to just basically go 10 inches between foam lines and it's got this boom that's kind of low to the ground and it's going to spray almost straight down so I can get pretty close but I can't get right up next to the shrubs so I was talking to the guy the other day and he said he'll put the same mix that's in the big tank he puts it in this isolated tank now this is a accessory here and he will drive it one-handed and as he's driving He's got the spray wand and he's riding through there spraying right up next to the shrubs with the spray wand. Then he comes back and starts uh, just using the machine after that. So that's what's going to be my plan. I'd love to hear from you in the comments if you have a better plan of how to get right up next to the shrubs um, without getting on the shrubs. He said he doesn't use the hose reel as much as he does this ISO tank right here. I was talking with a guy yesterday. He said he was bidding on a property that guy had 25 acres and had a lot of other properties and things like that. If you're doing some bigger properties and even smaller properties a lot of times, then the ride on spreader sprayer can definitely save you a lot of walking. And of course, it's going to be great when you're needing to spread fertilizer as well. Now, during the summer months, what I do a lot is walk around spraying Celsius and Certainty. That's a combination that I use on my warm season grasses that will get just about any weed out there. I'm, when I say get it, it doesn't mean it's gonna kill every weed, but it's gonna have some effectiveness on just about everything, including grassy weed, broadleaf weeds, and sedges. Now, there are some exceptions. There's some weeds that it's not gonna you know, do a great job on, and I'll keep other products. This is the Ground Logic Pathfinder. Now, this is now branded under Ferris as the Ferris Pathfinder, but it's virtually identical machine with a different sticker on the front of it. The thing I like about this, while I don't think it's a particularly great machine, as far, there's a few things that are a little bit cheaply done about it, but I actually really like this machine because it is very good on heels. I also love the very simple interface up here. It's just an on-off switch. There's your hour meter. Open and close the hopper. This is a throttle over here. I can spray over here and I can change the spray from the, the wide uh, nozzle to the narrow nozzle and adjust the spreader here. It has a very good turning radius as well. Again, I'm not sure these are built just to last forever. I'd love to hear from somebody that's had one for a long time. I've had two of them. I do like the machine. Uh, the tires do tend to wear out fairly quickly, especially on the outside, at least the way I drive it. The extra capacity, it's got the 16 gallon tank on it. Very good for small yards, fits through a small gate, throws a good pattern with that spiker hopper and a lot of things to like about this particular machine. Spraying, you have a, a narrow nozzle and a wide nozzle, nothing to get too excited about with the spray capabilities, but I do use it to spray post-emergent herbicides to take care of weeds in the yard, like that little spurge right there. I typically use it, like if I'm fertilizing, I'll keep something in the tank like change up or something that I can use to spot treat weeds as I'm fertilizing the lawn. So going over these, this is the Milwaukee two gallon battery powered sprayer. And I know I had a Milwaukee, uh, I'm a Milwaukee ambassador, sometimes they send me stuff. I had a Milwaukee backpack sprayer at one time and I heard some negative reviews on those. Mine was fine, it was just kind of heavy. But I'll say this, this two gallon, and they do make a one gallon, I really like this thing. Um, it's got three different settings here. I can, it turns on right there. It's gonna tell you battery status right there. It just runs off these little 12 volt batteries. And you can pop the whole top off, but you don't have to do that. What I do is you just simply unscrew it right here. And it actually has a little measuring cup right here so you can mix your chemicals. But you unscrew it right there. And this thing's got some serious power. I actually um, had sprayed, I don't do this, you know, there's not a whole lot of reason to do this on a yard, but I've sprayed 20 feet before. If you put it on high power, 
and uh, very much in a stream pattern. Now I keep it on number three, but I have it where it has a little misting type pattern where I adjust the wine. But been very happy with the Milwaukee two gallon. And I'm gonna put links in the description to some of these products if you wanna check them out. I've been using these up for a long time. These are the Smith Contractor two gallon. Now this is just a manual pump sprayer. And I don't know how many things, how many of these I've bought. I tell people they're good, not great. The part that tends to give out in my experience is right here, the hose will begin to kink. Um, they're a good value in my opinion because they're not that expensive. Occasionally this pressure relief valve will pop off, which is not ideal. But overall, I do really like these. I like the way they spray. They hold pressure pretty well. And a lot of times I'll end up using one of these as opposed to a backpack sprayer. This is another one I bought recently. This one's made by a company called Petra Tools, the HD2000, and it is battery powered. I like it too. A couple things I would change. I, I like the way it sprays. I like the brass fittings here, brass fittings here, the, the quality of the hose seems good. They want, in my opinion, again, I, I really love the brass connections in the hose. Um, I don't necessarily love the power being down at the bottom. I think I understand why they do that because that's just where the battery is uh, there. And the other thing is I like when the, the wand can be stored vertically as opposed to horizontally. And that's partially just my own personal preference because I store in these this wooden box thing I made. And you see when it's horizontal, it kind of gets in the way of the other one. So I prefer that that wand would be up and down versus horizontal, but it wouldn't be a factor if it was um, sitting in your, your garage or something like that. But this thing does spray very well. And overall, I do like it. This is another one, the Smith Contractor one. And in this one, I mean, I'd be shocked if these aren't made in the same factory because I've seen these same type Smith Contractor ones with different names on. This one says Scott's, but this is the, the battery version. So this is the Pump Zero technology. Really like it as well. Turn it on up here, which I like. And the difference in this one, this one will, will make a noise here as it's pumping up pressure. And then when the pressure gets pumped up, it'll quit making noise until it needs to build up more pressure. Um, where the Milwaukee one, it makes a noise every time you pull the trigger on it to spray, which is not a big preference either way, but just something to be observed. But it's basically the same sprayer as this, as the Smith Contract one. This one just has battery power. And I tell you, it, to me, the battery is the way to go. Uh, on these sprayers. I, not, these hold good pressure, but it's just so much better not to have to sit it down and start pumping again. So I've got a feeling I'll be ordering more of these in the future. Only thing I didn't like about this one, uh, I changed out the tip. I put the same tip on it that came on the manual pump. When it came with this green tip that could be rotated to be like a fan pattern or a, a more nozzle pattern. And that tip was a little bit bigger and when I pull it up out of here, out of my truck, it would the wand would come falling out and hit on the ground and it got cracked very quickly. So I put a, a, the tip on it that goes on, on these and it, of course it screwed right on there. And one of the things I like about having a flat bed truck is I can mount these racks for my backpack sprayers right on the bed of the truck. And these are by no means the top two backpack sprayers on the market, but I'm just showing you what I got. I do love these green touch uh, racks. They're, they're nothing complicated about them, but uh, a year or two ago, they upgraded the buckle here. It used to be a different style buckle that occasionally would start coming loose. And I have not had that problem since the upgraded buckle. So really like that. And it's just very simple to uh, unhook them and loosen them up here and then unbuckle to get your sprayer off. This one, y'all can make fun of if you want to. This thing I got on clearance at Walmart. And uh, it's the, the Walmart brand, what, what's it called here? It's a, uh, oh, Hart. And it came with a battery and it was cheap because it was on clearance. And I thought, you know what, I'll buy the battery. It'll come, it'll come with the battery, I can use the battery for other things. So I bought like a little tire inflator thing with the same battery and I like it a lot. The sprayer is, is okay, uh, it's not bad. I, I don't use it that much, but just to have another sprayer here that's battery powered. Lately I've been putting Tribute Total and Dismiss in there and going after my really difficult grassy weeds with this particular one. So not a bad sprayer, but certainly not the best one on the market. This is the Jack Toe HD 400. So it's a four gallon made by Jack Toe, J-A-C-T-O. Again, I'll put links in there. This one's manual pump as well. Um, that one is, is battery. So I keep like SureGuard and glyphosate in this, and this is what I use mostly to spray flower beds. There's some other really nice battery powered backpack sprayers out there. Again, these are two that I use, and honestly, I end up using 
the handheld sprayers a lot more for spot tree than I do the backpack. That's just a personal preference, but I like to have my options here. So I keep these for have multiple chemicals mixed up at the same time. So that's my sprayer overview. Hope it was helpful. If you hadn't done so, subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want to get a weed control and fertilization like me, go to LawnCareLife.com. You can check out the Weed Control and Fertilization Academy. A lot of people take advantage of that. Also, the 2024 Lawn Care Life Conference coming up February 23rd and 24th in Springville, Alabama, near Birmingham. This will be the fourth conference we put on. We're planning to sell this one out. We got 300 seats available. The early bird special is $197. That includes all your meals. It's a Friday night and most of the day Saturday. So we're looking forward to having a huge event. I'll play the trailer for you now so you can check that out. Hey everybody, it's Jason Creel. Let me be the first to invite you to the 2024 Lawn Care Life Conference, February 23rd and 24th in Springville, Alabama, just outside of Birmingham. I've got my friend Paul Jamison, Alan Hayne, Caleb and Brittany Allman, Jeremy Viz, Naylor Taliaferro, Jeremiah Jennings, and others coming, and hopefully you coming to this year's event. We've got seats for 300 people, and this year's going to be bigger and better than ever. This is our fourth conference to do, and the early bird ticket prices is $197. That includes all your meals. We got a Friday night session, we got dinner, we got an after party, and we got breakfast and lunch on Saturday with day full of sessions. We've got equipment to ride on, giveaways, sponsors. It's going to be a great event, a lot of transparency, a lot of interaction, a lot of tips on how to grow your business, and a lot of fun. We hope to see you February 23rd, 24th, Springville, Alabama. I absolutely love Jason and Tracy Creole. They have humongous hearts of hospitality. They host a wonderful event. I attended it back in 2020, and I'm really looking forward to returning to Sweet Home, Alabama for the 2024 Lawn Care Life Conference. Hey guys, I can't wait to see you at Jason's event this February. There's going to be a lot of speakers giving as much value as they can, such as myself as well as a lot of great networking opportunities. Hope to see you there soon. Hey y'all, I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Happy to let you know that I will be attending the Lawn Care Life Conference in 2024, February 23rd and 24th of 2024. This is Jason Creel's conference. This is the fourth year I've been there every year. I'll be a keynote speaker this year, gonna bring you some fire. I'd say there's no better place that you can go to to, to get the tools you need to be successful. Like-minded people, good networking. I've learned a lot about growing my business more than anything here. I tell you what, this place could not be any better. We got a lot of great information, a lot of great speakers. The food was awesome. Jason Krill has done a very, very excellent job in uh, presenting this lawn care conference. It's awesome to meet some of the guys that you follow on YouTube. You're around like-minded people who also want to grow, and you're listening to people who are just like you who are also growing. Definitely be coming back next year.